Okay, shooters, today we're gonna to take apart a Parazzi MX series receiver so we can do some yearly maintenance on the gun before the season starts. We've already taken the stock off this gun and right now we're gonna take the trigger out. We're gonna hold the receiver firmly in our left hand. We're gonna put our two fingers through the trigger guard and we're gonna press forward on the safety with our right hand thumb and we're gonna pull the trigger out very, very easily. So here we're going to look at the mainsprings for the hammers. We're going to look in this area right here for any possible hairline cracks or something that indicates that one of the springs is getting ready to break. And I don't see anything here, so we're going to leave these springs in the gun. Otherwise, you would take the springs out of the trigger with your spare parts kit, the wrench, and your replacement springs and put them in the gun. I strongly recommend you always keep a spare parts kit with you just in case one of the hammer springs breaks or one of the firing pins separate. Remember that a Parazzi firing pin is actually two pieces, one inside the other, and sometimes they will separate over thousands of rounds of use. But right now we're going to take the receiver and we're going to take the firing pins out and then we're going to take the top lever out, which will also let us take out the uh, locking block. When your barrel is on your gun, if your, lock, if your top lever is over to the right from this right here, this is called the six o'clock position, your locking block still has plenty of, le of life left and it's holding the barrels properly in place. If it's over here just to the side of the top of the receiver, then you're in really good shape. But right now we're going to take apart the, the top lever and first thing to do is we're going to take out the firing pins. So we're going to press on this cross pin here and as we do that you'll see the top barrel firing pin pop out just a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to take that firing pin out and notice that the spring did not come out with the firing pin and we need to get that out so we're going to Use our pick tool, and we're gonna come up in the firing pin hole, and we're gonna get that spring out of there. And there it is. So we'll reuse that firing pin spring. Always look at the, the back end, the hammer end of the firing pin. And if you see any indication of the small pin coming out of the hammer end, then you have firing pin separation going on and you should replace that firing pin. But this firing pin is still good, so we'll reuse it. We're gonna continue pushing on the cross pin and you'll see the bottom barrel firing pin pop up just a little bit there. And we can take the bottom barrel firing pin out. Notice in this case, the firing pin, the firing pin return spring came out with the firing pin and we don't see any separation indications on the back of this firing pin, so we'll reuse both firing pins. Notice on the Parazzi gun, when we align the, the hammer ends of both firing pins, one firing pin is a little bit longer than the other. That's the bottom barrel or the right hand side as the receiver is facing away from you. So now we're gonna take out the top lever and to do that, we need to take the spring pressure off of the top lever return spring that's behind this top lever return spring plunger. This slot right here is not a screwdriver slot, although I'm in pointing at it with a screwdriver, but it is only an alignment slot. So we're gonna press forward very slightly here, and we're gonna take the spring pressure off of that top lever return spring, and then we're gonna pick the top lever up just a little bit at a time and you need to take it up about a half of an inch and then you can take out the locking block of the gun. And we've already determined that we don't need to replace the locking block so we're going to set it aside right here. Now we need to go ahead and take the hammer or I'm sorry the top lever out of the out of the receiver. We'll set it aside and the only thing we need to do is take out the top lever return 
plunger and the spring. I recommend that you replace this spring every year as think of the thousands and thousands of times that you open the gun. And this, this is about an $8 spring. So I recommend replacing that spring. And we're gonna do that with a new spring that I have right here when we put the gun back together. So we'll put these parts over here and we will continue with our disassembly. The other thing we're gonna take out today is we're gonna take out the ejector trip rods. And we'll do that with this pair of needle nose pliers. We're gonna reach up inside here and we're gonna pull back on the ejector trip rod and just pull it right out. What's key about the ejector trip rods is that when this bend is as it is going into the, into the receiver slot, the flat surface of the ejector trip rod should always be up. So we're gonna put that on the left-hand side there. And here we're gonna take and pull out the other ejector trip rod and it just pulls straight back and again, when the end is in the middle, the 90 degree bend is in the middle, the flat spot of the ejector trip rod is up. So now we've taken all the parts all out of the receiver that I recommend that you do for yearly maintenance. I recommend that you do not take off the top lever stop plate here. There's a spring and a plunger up inside here, and there's another plunger right here. And those parts do not wear very much, so I recommend that you leave those alone. So that's it for taking it all apart. Thanks for watching.